And welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Andrew Kraft. Thanks for being with us here. Well, by now, you may have seen this viral video out of a courtroom in Clark County, Nevada, Las Vegas. The video needs no introduction. Take a look. You get a taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of the state of Nevada, this court... All right, that right there, her name, District Court Judge in Clark County, Mary Kay Holthus. You see her falling back from her seat against a wall as this defendant, his name, Deobra Redden, flung himself over the judge's bench and grabbed her hair, toppling an American flag onto them. The judge suffered some injuries but was not hospitalized. That defendant was jailed on a $54,000 bail and refused to return to court today on new charges. So a judge rescheduled his next appearance for January the 9th. He's 30 years old. He now faces 13 counts, including extortion and coercion with force. Seven of the new counts are battery on a protected person. That's referring to the judge and officers who came to her aid. Uh, right now, we want to bring into the conversation a representative with our Nevada judges, Alexander Franconi. He joins us with the latest. Uh, he's been kind of monitoring all the reaction to this as well. Um, Alexander, thanks so much for being with us here. Um, I guess first, before we get into some of our questions, what was your reaction when you first saw this video? Can you believe this happened um, to a district court judge there, any judge for that matter? No, I mean, I've I've heard and I've even had a camera in a courtroom that we captured, you know, an occasion like this in high definition, but I've never quite seen an attack like this. It, to me, it was shocking because of how especially violent it was. So uh, it's in my eyes, an unprecedented attack. And uh, it was very upsetting to observe. You know, I also want to kind of get into as well. I mean, do you have any updates on how the judge is doing? We know she wasn't hospitalized, but do you know people who know her? Maybe you know her. How is she holding up? So the court information officer, Marianne Price of the 8th Judicial District, did release a statement indicating that they were monitoring her. Um, there was a, a press conference that we were at that we broadcast live where a statement was read um, where she expressed her appreciation at uh, the words of encouragement and support. Um, I think uh, her marshal is significantly more injured um, due to a serious head wound, there were some photographs floating around on social media. Um, but uh, this is not a particular judge that I have a lot of contact with. When I do have contact with judges, it's at arm's length. I mean, I, the Our Nevada Judges Corporation is a nonprofit organization separate from the courts. And um, out of respect for their role, I don't get too close to them. So I'm, I'm aware of her. She ran in an election that I covered. And to that extent, I, I do know about her. And I was upset that she was attacked. Yeah, let's talk more, though, about the judge, too. I mean, she seems to have served in Clark County for, for a really long time. Uh, and so... She appears from this video to have seen this suspect before her before, right? It will, you mean when he was charging at her or as in a multiple different cases? In, in multiple instances, it seemed like there was some type of recognizance or familiarity that the judge had with, with the suspect, with Redden. Well, that would probably surprise me. The, there's a lot of judges in the 8th Judicial District. It's, they have more judges in District 8 than they have in the rest of the state combined when we're talking about the district court anyway. Um, but perhaps uh, it, she had several hearings with the same defendant. That's actually a relatively common thing. Uh, we've covered a lot of trials, over 650 hearings, and it's not unusual for a, one case to go in front of the same judge five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, yeah. especially in Clark County. They hold hearings a lot more often in the 8th Judicial District than the other uh, districts. So that's, if you're asking about that, that she had familiarity with this particular defendant, that wouldn't surprise me in the sense of just the case that she was sitting on, just having seen him multiple times. But I didn't check to see if she presided over any of the other uh, cases. I, I understand that he has some significant background, but I, I didn't check into that. Yeah, and of course... This is such an unfortunate thing if you're, you know, a district court judge, a federal judge. Uh, sometimes you do face threats against your life, uh, against your family and friends as well, because of the position you hold. This one there in the moment turned so violent. Uh, and I was just kind of curious as well, what did you make of the response of kind of everyone kind of watching this happen? It, it seemed like it was so quick, so sudden there. 
Uh, and then, of course, more and more people came to the aid of the judge and the marshal there as well. Did you think the response was adequate? Well, I can actually answer that two different ways, personally and objectively. So there was, as I mentioned, a, a one that we were um, filming on High Definition that was the State of Nevada versus Michael McDonald sometime in 2019 that I was personally at. And when this kind of stuff happens, or at least when it happened for, you know, when I was there, your instinct, at least my instinct was that this is going to be stopped very quickly. And the uh, situation in the courtroom there was pretty much the same. Uh, we, everyone kind of was froze because it's like, okay, this defendant is acting out probably within three, four, five seconds, they're going to put a stop to it, but they couldn't, they couldn't stop that defendant either. And it, it took, um, uh, then they had to call for assistance. Several other marshals came in to subdue the individual. Um, and I also mentioned I would answer the question objectively. There is, a, in my opinion, having filmed so many different judges in so many different judicial districts, the culture, the marshal culture in all of the, the other judicial districts is quite different. And so objectively, I do not think that this would have happened, say, for example, in the second judicial district court. Um, just for the fact that they just have more marshals. Oh, I see. And it's not that I'm I'm intending to disparage the judicial district court. I care very much about all of the judges in the state. I just can tell because I've been in so many different districts that there's a stark difference. And I think that if the 8th Judicial District Court had more resources, they would you know, put those resources to use. My hunch is that it's just a, an issue of resources, financial support. And um, I, uh, the chief judge, uh, Jerry Weiss, is, in my opinion, a good leader. I think that yeah. if he was given the resources he needed, he would uh, impl use those resources to uh, ramp up security, training, etc. cetera. Um, so that's my observation is compared to the other judicial districts, especially to the second judicial district court, the response does not surprise me, and I I don't think that that would have happened in some of the other judicial judicial districts. And uh, this is just sort of a matter of you know matter of fact tone that I mentioned that to you that um you can make a difference depending on the culture, the martial culture, the financial resources available to the district, and stuff like that. It it does matter, and I think that um the chief judges, as he expressed at the. Uh, the press conference, he's looking into more resources, and I think that that will definitely make a difference. There's a lot of room for improvement in that judicial district. Yeah, I was going to ask just about whether or not you think that for this particular judicial district, whether or not more resources for security, not only, you know, for the judge, but, you know, others in the courtroom as well. You right. know, we talk about the response, and just from a, you know, personal perspective watching this, I've watched this now like 20, 25 times, it took them a really, it seemed like it took them quite a while to subdue this suspect. It was kind of like a slow motion disaster mm -hmm. happening in front of us. And maybe that's why, you know, there were several people just around there. You see this gentleman, right. they, didn't just, they just didn't know what to do, how they could help. Of course, they probably wanted to help. But to your point, it's kind of like they were just frozen in place there out of shock, maybe. Because it is so sunny. I mean, we don't see this every day. I think it's the assumption. I think it's the assumption a defendant is acting out and they're going to put a stop to it very quickly. That's what I think it is. And when that doesn't happen, I think people's brains freeze yeah. because what you expected to occur did not occur. Now, what do you do? You know, a lot of people expect that the protection of the court is um, in, in some ways super powerful. And those are just ordinary human beings. Those are just four or four or five, or, you know, it's just, it's it's upsetting, I think, because our expectation is not, not consistent with reality. Yeah. And so I'm not surprised that a lot of people froze up um, just based on my personal reaction when it happened when I was there in 2019. I was I was kind of the same. I was like, what's going on? Why is it taking so long to take care of the situation? Yeah, Alexander, so, just, just lastly here, you don't think this is going to embolden more defendants to act out? Do you think this was just kind of a one-off, fluke, horrible situation? Or, or do you... Or do you worry that, you know, more defendants might feel emboldened after this? I don't really know how I feel about that. Okay. I mean, having done 650 hearings, only one one situation that went out of control. Sure. That I don't think that that is going to change. Maybe it will, but I think a lot of people are not inclined, maybe not even just for uh, self-preservation issues in the physical sense, but just because they don't want to get 
you know, more tacked on to their sentence. Um, I do understand that other judicial districts actually deal with uh, difficult defendants in different ways. I think the 11th Judicial District Court has stun belts that they put on certain defendants. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, th there's tools that are available that they could use if that was a serious concern. Um, so, I mean, I, I really don't know what to tell you about that. I, I don't think that that video is going to uh, embolden people, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, we do appreciate um, kind of your insight, your expertise and experience coming on here uh, live now from Fox. Uh, Alexander Falcone, thanks so much. Talk soon. Thank you.